Hello and welcome to our three-part video series on workflows. If you're brand new to workflow forms, you might be wondering what's the difference between a normal form and a workflow form? Well, workflow forms allow you to create a single form where multiple submitters can participate in filling it out. You get to control what parts of the form each person can view and edit. Imagine an employee review form where you can allow the employee to complete the first half of a form while the manager completes the second half and finishes the submission. All of the submitted data from each participant gets combined into a single record that saves in your form submissions. For this three-part series, we're going to focus on creating our workflow form, and then we will follow up with editing a workflow form, and finally, configuring workflow logic. We're going to be using the example of an employee review form that also has the option to get sent to our HR department if a salary adjustment is required. To get started, we can create a workflow form by either copying an existing workflow form, copying a standard form into a workflow form, or by creating a brand new form. For this example, we're going to create a new form and then choose workflow. Please note that workflow forms are only available as an add-on and you would need to contact your Formstack account manager if you are interested in adding this feature. We're going to complete the normal steps of giving our form a name, and then we can either start with a blank form or choose from one of our many templates. For this example, let's go ahead and select the blank form option. Workflow forms are built like normal, but you'll notice a draft mode icon until the entire workflow is published. For this example, we've already built our form. While you're building, keep in mind sections are what act as breakoff points for the different workflow participants, such as the manager and employee in this example. Sections are also used when mapping out the steps in the workflow editor. To create a section, you can simply drag and drop the section option that appears at the bottom left. It's best to name your section with details that relate to who's filling it out. In this case, let's fast forward to a fully built form with sections for the employee, the manager, and the HR department. Now that we've finished with building our form, we can move on to the workflow editor. Click on Workflow Editor right above your form. The entry step, or step one, initiates the workflow. This is the first person who fills out the form, which sets the entire workflow into motion. To get started, we want to click on the entry step. From here, You'll see the option to name your step or specify if logging in is required. This would usually only be toggled on if this was an internal form that's being used by individuals on your Formstack account. For this example, we want anyone to be able to access this first part of our form. Moving over to our sections tab of this step, we can assign or drag and drop the sections of the form that we want the end user to fill out. In this example, we've pulled over the employee section because that's the only portion we want the initial person to fill out to start the workflow. We've also made sure to select the Edit option in order for this section to be filled out by the end user. For future reference, you could also drag and drop other sections and only give the end user view permissions. Although following steps in the workflow will be assigned to specific individuals, this first step is not. Think of this first step as the everyday portion of the form anyone can fill out to kick the workflow into motion. Once the entry step is completed, we can move on to add additional steps. We'll add a step 2 to the workflow and set our name for this step, as well as the form stack user who will be completing this step. Again, we can choose whether this person needs to log in or not. It's worth mentioning that you do have the option to assign the participant of step two via a field on your form, but this field value must be a valid email address that's associated with a form stack user on the account. Moving over to the sections tab, we want to drag over sections that will be completed by the individual in step two. As a reminder, we want to assign can edit rights to these sections because we want the step two participant to actually fill out these fields. For this example, we have the manager who's editing this section of the field. But just like we mentioned before, 
Let's say we want the Step 2 participant to also be able to view the submitted data from Step 1. We can drag over the section assigned to Step 1 and give it Can View Rights. This will allow the Step 2 participant to view the form data saved from Step 1 while also being able to fill out their own assigned sections. For this example, we have the first step from the employee being filled out and then assigned to the manager who will be reviewing the employee's submission and then adding their own review. If you ever create a step and then decide that you want to delete it, you can do so by clicking on the trash can in the right corner of the section. From here, you can also duplicate a step and add steps before or after the current step. Once your workflow is completely set up, you're ready to publish it. To do so, save your settings here and then click Publish Workflows. Once a workflow is published, the form itself and the workflow settings can only undergo small changes. We will cover these specific changes in another video called Editing a Workflow Form. After the entry step of the form is completed, each participant assigned to your workflow will receive an email notification from Formstack when it's their turn to fill out that portion of the workflow form. Here's an example of the email sent to the next person in the workflow. Clicking on Complete Task opens the form and triggers the next portion of the workflow. Any assigned user can also access this form from the Workspace tab while logged on. It's worth mentioning that you'll see new changes when viewing submissions on a workflow form. The submissions page will now show separation among completed workflows and workflows in progress. Completed workflows have gone through each step of the process and are saved as submissions. Workflows in progress are partially completed workflows that still have steps remaining. Workflows in progress can also be assigned to a different user to be completed by selecting the submission and then clicking on the reassign option right here. A few things that are worth mentioning that are different from our regular forms are notifications and confirmation emails as well as integrations will be triggered like normal once a workflow form has gone through the entire workflow and is submitted as a completed workflow. You can still use routing logic on these emails and integrations like with normal forms. Completed workflow submissions can be shared via share link or RSS feed, just like a normal form. Unfortunately, submissions that are still in progress cannot be shared. That's it for our first video on how to create a workflow form. For more information, or if you ever need to get in contact with our support team, please remember that you can always select this eye icon on the top right corner. Thank you for watching our first video on creating a workflow form, and please be sure to check out our other videos in this series that cover editing a workflow and working with workflow logic.